Did you notice Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta changing from their usual 4-3-3 tactics last season? Also, Klopp had to make changes to cover Liverpool's defensive weaknesses in the 4-3-3 setup. Ultimately, this big change led to Arsenal challenging Manchester City in the Premier League for the first time in years. And of course, it led City to clinch the treble. We'll be analyzing why this change had to be done, and also some of the big advantages the new formation gives to Guardiola's team. Football is a dynamic sport, where tactics evolve over time to address current challenges. Every few years, a new tactical approach emerges, serving as the solution to prevailing issues. This approach gains momentum, eventually dominating the sport until a fresh problem-solving tactic replaces it. Last season, Guardiola in particular showed off his tactical flexibility. For example, in both wins over Arsenal, City didn't dominate possession as they usually do, but did punish Arsenal's backline when the Gunners tried to press high. For several years now, Pep Guardiola has been toying with the idea of implementing a particular tactical approach in various forms. For example, his Manchester City team has utilized Fabian Delph as a left-back, occasionally employing Kyle Walker as an inverted fullback, and even deploying Imeric Laporte as a left-back against specific opponents. Also, Cancelo positioned himself more centrally when City were in possession in his last season at the club. However, this season had seen a notable difference, as the Catalan-born coach has fully committed to this system. And he's not the only one. Xavi at Barcelona and Mikel Arteta at Arsenal, both of whom who were once apprentices of Guardiola, have also adopted a similar tactic. Additionally, Jurgen Klopp of Liverpool played in almost the same manner towards the end of the season. All four teams initially line up in a 4-3-3 formation, but dynamically transition into a 3-2-5 shape when they have possession of the ball. It's fascinating to know that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to this tactic, as each team adapts and uses it in their own unique way. We'll look closer at the different ways of playing this system, but let's first take a look at why Guardiola and several of the top teams abandoned the classic 4-3-3. In the 21-22 season, both Liverpool and Manchester City played a 4-3-3 formation all season with success. Only one point separated them in the end, at 93 and 92 points. And if we look at their passing network, the formation that City played was extremely satisfying to look at. I mean, look at that symmetry in that pass map. This highlights some of the strength of the 4-3-3. The triangles and diamonds players can use to pass the ball around through the opposition. Even with this great success at home in England, City just couldn't reach their ultimate goal – to win the Champions League. Also, Guardiola started to notice that teams had changed their counterplay gradually. City started to be vulnerable to teams with good defensive organization and pace up front. More and more teams got hope for points when going to the Etihad Stadium. Pep needed more domination in the center of the pitch and also a better rest defense, a structure that could kill off counterattacks better. In Man City's case, this led to the 2-3-5 structure. Let's look closer at how the top teams set up this system. At Arsenal, Alexander Zinchenko starts as a left back but transitions into midfield alongside Thomas Partey. In this setup, Gabriel, the left-sided center back, covers the space on the left while Ben White does the same on the right. As White is not the traditional right back, this is the logical solution. Bukayo Saka and Gabriel Martinelli provide width, and Martin Odegar and Granit Xhaka support Gabriel Jesus in the attacking setup. With the addition of Urien Timber, Kai Havertz, and Declan Rice, it'll be interesting to see how Arsenal will set up in the upcoming season. Liverpool takes a different approach with Trent Alexander-Arnold moving into midfield to partner with Fabinho. They typically use a back three consisting of Andrew Robertson, Virgil van Dijk, and Ibrahima Kanate. Curtis Jones and Jordan Henderson work with Cody Gakpo, Diogo Jota, and Mohamed Salah to form an effective and high-scoring attacking unit. This system is more aligned with Guardiola's style at Manchester City. However, after the summer, Neither Henderson nor Fabinho will be Liverpool players anymore. So how will Alexis McAllister and Dominic Soboslai fit into this style? We might get a 4-2-3-1 setup at Anfield this season. As for Barcelona, 
Like Arsenal, their right back shifts to a right sided center back in a back three during possession. However, they differ in positioning other players. Instead of moving the left back into midfield, Barcelona's system sees the fullback take up a more winger like role. In the setup, the two widest players are Alejandro Balde and Ralfina. Gavi starts on the left side of a front three, but drops into the left side of midfield when Barcelona has possession. The double pivot consists of Frankie de Jong and Sergio Busquets, while Pedri essentially mirrors Gavi's movements on the opposite side of the pitch. Now let's explore the advantages behind this tactical setup. There are various methods to adopt this shape, but the ultimate objective is always to create a box midfield. With many teams employing a midfield trio, having a box formation in the middle third provides a numerical advantage. It facilitates possession retention by offering more passing options and makes it easier to progress play due to the presence of a free player. The box midfield plays a crucial role in generating space and opportunities on the field. For example, here, Liverpool has a double pivot for Fabinho and Alexander-Arnold. As Jota drops into a deeper area, White follows him, creating space behind him. Rob Holding at the back cannot shift across to cover this space due to Gokpo's positioning. Consequently, Curtis Jones is able to exploit the vacant area where the right back should be. This freedom of movement for Jones is a direct result of the tactical system in place. The new 3-5 formation offers superior teams the ability to create space throughout every phase of play. However, it does necessitate specific player profiles in key positions. Wide players now require winger-like attributes, such as being comfortable on the touchline and skilled at carrying the ball. Midfielders, on the other hand, take on somewhat of a throwback role, fulfilling box-to-box -box duties as they seamlessly transition between the in-possession and out-of-possession shapes of the team. Moreover, at least one of the fullbacks must also function as a third center back, leading to an increased demand for players with these capabilities and ultimately driving up their price tags. As we've mentioned earlier, the driving force behind these tactical innovations is none other than Pep Guardiola, who excels at reinventing football strategies. Throughout his coaching career at Barcelona, Bayern Munich, and now Manchester City, he has transformed traditional player roles and adapted them to the modern game. This unpredictability catches opponents and players off guard, as he continuously devises new tactical innovations that suit his team's dominating style. Under Guardiola's guidance, Manchester City's tactics have evolved to become increasingly flexible. While Barcelona primarily used the 4-3-3 formation, Manchester City swiftly shifts from a back four to a back three during different phases of play and from one game to another. In fact, last season alone, Pep employed six different tactical formations and shapes, ranging from inverting the pyramid to the traditional 4-4-2. These tactical variations orchestrated by Pep Guardiola have been described as the football meta, as his tactical genius breathes new life into the game, creating a winning formula. From transitioning from the classic 4-3-3 to a daring 2-3-5, Guardiola has revolutionized football tactics in the 21st century continuously evolving season after season. Whether it's to exploit an opponent's weakness or maximize his player's potential, he introduces novel elements to his tactics or reworks successful strategies from the past. For instance, making subtle adjustments to his wingers, number eights, and attacking midfielders to get the best out of a powerful striker like Erling Haaland, or optimizing the roles of his fullbacks and defensive midfielders for tactical advantage. One noticeable tactical shift has been the transition from a 4-1 defensive shape with a single pivot to a double pivot in front of a back three. What caught everyone's attention was the surprising move of placing John Stones, typically a center back, as one of the two holding midfielders. In the early years of Pep Guardiola's managerial career, he converted defensive midfielders into center backs to ensure proficient ball passing from the back, aiding the team's build-up play. However, the focus has now shifted to transitions and the speed of attacking play. Guardiola takes his aggressive defensive approach further by positioning one of the defenders higher up the pitch to counter opposition counterattacks. In modern football, the rapid transition between defensive and attacking organization is of crucial importance. 
to maintain numerical superiority in the middle of the pitch and defend all zones and channels effectively. Guardiola and other managers strive to find the ideal solution that allows swift changes in shape during possession and out of possession. Enter Manchester City's new 3-2-5 tactic, precisely designed to achieve this objective. The shape bears resemblance to Ajax's total football system and Johan Cruyff's 3-4-3 formation. Particularly in terms of the backline setup, Ajax's use of fullbacks like Rud Kroll and Surbia, with one player pushing up the midfield like a libero, is akin to Stone's role in the team. In practice, Manchester City defends with four defenders, but in possession, Ruben Diaz finds himself one-on-one -on -one with the opposing forward holding a central position to protect that area of the pitch. Meanwhile, Rodri maintains his position in front of the wide back three, while Stones remains closely connected to him, forming the double pivot. Each formation has its advantages and drawbacks. Pep Guardiola's tactics at Manchester City, utilizing a 3-2-5 shape to overload the opposition in the final third and create a box midfield to achieve numerical superiority in the middle, prove effective particularly when facing a 4-3-3 setup. While the intention is to surround the opponent with closely positioned players to facilitate ball recovery upon losing possession, the 3-2-5 system has its weaknesses when out of possession. One such flaw is the vulnerability of space behind the wingers, increasing the likelihood of being exposed to overlaps down the flanks. With five forwards, there's a greater need to defend higher up the pitch. Although the 3-2 defensive structure at the back helps protect all five channels against counterattacks, it also emphasizes the importance of wingers contributing to more defensive actions. In fact, to make this system work effectively, it demands players who possess the right attributes and skills, including discipline, awareness, and composure. Guardiola learned that it's crucial to abandon the notion of rigid formations in modern football. The game has become highly dynamic, and players no longer function within fixed systems. Instead, they have individual roles within carefully crafted blueprints that adapt throughout the match. All tactical setups nowadays are hybrids, constantly evolving and far from traditional formations. Defining them solely based on old-school structures is overly simplistic. Players must possess mental resilience and tactical acumen to handle the ever-changing demands of the game. Managers identify weaknesses in the opposition and assign specific roles to exploit them. For instance, if an opponent shows vulnerability on the right side, having an extra player with a specific role in that area becomes critical. Whether it's called a 3-2-5, a WM formation, or a 3-2-4-1, the label is less important than understanding that elite teams are moving forward with hybrid and increasingly complex systems. These setups evolve during the game, allowing them to exploit weaknesses and reduce vulnerability. As proof of the efficacy of such tweaks, Guardiola's Manchester City just accomplished a historic treble. What do you think about these new tactics and formations? Have you observed them in action? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you want to know how Manchester United can finally dominate games after securing Andre Onana as their new goalkeeper, check out this video next.